dark save for light being cast from the big tv screen and the imminent sunrise that's teasing the one starry sky with whispers of morning hey george hey lines how's it going uh you know like been kind of a crazy holiday season and so crazy, okay you say here's the thing um yeah. i do that a lot right like i pull yeah. a word yeah. out of the title um, but seriously, man, that's some, from the title of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's from the taxi. Um, I, I'm not going to go into details, but you know, and mm-hmm. possibly folks in the after show may find out maybe, um, mm-hmm. like some actual crazy crap happened this holiday season. So like it's frustrating. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that like, you know, probes went that, you know, like deep, but, yeah. uh, or that they had that many flanges. Yeah, it's a lot of flanges for a single oh, probe. So many. It's. I mean, like, I thought I, I always thought that Futurama, Futurama's probulator was like a work of fiction, but actually, that undersells what all went down. It was, it was impressive, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they couldn't draw all the flanges. <laughs> it's a terrible strain on the writer's <laughs> wrists. <laughs> I actually got to drop that on someone. Oh yeah. And I, it kills me that I cannot remember the circumstances. Somebody said something that if you took what they said very literally would imply they thought the thing was being animated live, even though they obviously <laughs> didn't. But right. if you twisted their words just enough and I was like in the back of my, you know, Roger Rabbit brain, I was just like, I'm never going to get closer than this. No, nope. like, this, <laughs> this is, is it. This is my one and only opportunity yeah, to pull this line your out. Brain, your brain went. <gasps> yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I've been there. But what, what do we play? We played Crazy Taxi, uh, specifically the Dreamcast port. Uh, this was I, I a request. Believe we actually played. We played Crazy Taxi. Whoa, nineties. <laughs> oh yeah. So, okay. Do you know who that voice is supposed to be? No. Okay. There was a radio guy from like the seventies oh, or eighties named Wolfman Jack, and. That's definitely an impersonation of Wolfman Jack, because I actually have a note in uh, the audiovisual section that says, why is Wolfman Jack the narrator? <laughs> <laughs> Just like it's it's a, it's a choice. Um, but you're 100 percent right. It is, in fact, crazy taxi. <laughs> uh, the Dreamcast port uh, 1999 uh, and it's 1999 all over. Um, I'm, I, I think I have a good because this was an arcade game, right? Sega, big arcade cabinet company. Uh, They ported this to the Dreamcast, their final death throes of, hey, we can still make console hardware. And uh, I think I have a decent summary for this game. In a world of immortals where everyone and everything is made out of vibranium, only you can get citizens from whatever random spot on the map they're standing at to Pizza Hut and the (laughs) Levi's store before they get fed up with your crap driving and jump from a moving vehicle. Yes, with no regard for their own safety, because... And, because and, they're immortals made out of vibranium. Yeah. Yeah. No, like, like I'm not entirely sure how, uh, you know, conservation of momentum works in this universe, but <laughs> it does not. <laughs> yeah. So actually t- tangent right off the, off the cuff. Right. Um, I've been creating, uh, like kind of like a spell jammer universe, right. In D and D. Right. And so the first thing I had to do obviously was create a very complex coordinate system to describe the exact location of different stars within this galaxy. Right. You know, I I don't know how you could have started without doing that. Exactly. It would not have been respectful to your players. Right. So, you know, I was like, I was like, okay, it'll be like, you know, X, 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 Mark, Y, 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 Mark, Z, Z, Z. And the first one would be in radians. The second one would, you know, from the galactic center. Right. I did all this. And I was like, yeah, but what about different, like possible universes? Right. So I was like, okay, well, there's, um, all universes will have like a three letter prefix, but each one will be prefixed by a different prefix, which it will be like the first letter will be how different is the mathematics. Then the second letter will be how different is the physics. And then the third letter will be how different is the chemistry. Right. But uh, all off uni- of like some statistical mean off of like the central finite curve, like how different of, from what, how different from like what we would consider what the people doing the documenting would consider normative, which would be, our universe right got it but 
But the thing is that as I was just kind of like, and I promise this comes back, is that I was like, <laughs> is, is I said like, okay, so what I'm going to do is because a lot of the interesting stuff is like different timelines and stuff, right? So it's like, basically all universes are considered AAA universes, which is the math, physics, and chemistry works the same, right? When you start to get outside of AAA universes, then things start to get weird, right? This is not a AAA universe because physics doesn't work the same way, right? You know, like when all of a sudden somebody just jumps from the vehicle and it's just like, all right, I'm fine. It's just like, what? How though? And it's just like, well, you know, <laughs> science. Like I can't. <laughs> well, there, there is no speed at which you can strike an object that causes damage to the car or the object, right? Like it's just everything is made. And and the thing is, I was playing this game for thirty seconds before I went. Oh my god, everything is made out of vibranium. Like, <laughs> or, just... or alternatively, like everything's made. Like I think that you're right, but is that everything's made out of vibranium, so like nothing can dent, or that your car is almost infinitely dense and everything <laughs> else is not right. So like these people weigh like one kilogram and that's why when you like run into them, they just immediately like, like feathers, you know, it's like, it's like hitting a car, like a feather with your car. It just kind of like flies off to the side unharmed, you know? Yeah. I mean, whatever it is, it has to be a fundamental feature of the universe. Uh, because as we will discuss, uh, Everybody seems to be fine with everything that's happening, right? It's the the one and only way to make people upset is to not get them to their destination quickly enough. It doesn't matter how much damage you, well, you can't cause damage, but like how many people you almost run over, how many things you crash into, like everything's fine. Um, should should we shill before we actually start into this? We, we should shill, but I will, I will just say that, uh, you know, just to give everybody kind of a heads up, uh, this is no longer a, a video game review podcast. All we do is just delve into the physics of different video games and not like game <laughs> we, physics, like actual physics. So uh, we've got a bunch we picked of, a hell of like, a game to I've start. Some slides. <laughs> <laughs> do you, but do you have a slide rule? Do you know how to use a slide rule? You're a scientist. I don't. Um, uh, in, is that in, more it, of an engineering thing? It, it is a more of an engineering thing. And B, I think kind of like an abacus, like why would you use that anymore? You know? I, I feel like the main reason I even know what a slide rule is, aside from like just general history knowledge, is it comes up a lot in disaster movies as like, ah, uh, this old guy scientist still knows, like he can do the calculations because he knows how to use a slide rule, even though the internet is down or whatever. Right. Yeah, no, I I, I, I never learned how to use a slide rule. Uh, yeah, same thing with like an abacus where I, I looked it up once and I was like, I, I, I did look up once how to use that one. Oh, neat. And then it didn't retain because I've never used one. But yeah. yeah. Well, and, and the whole point of an abacus is to be able to use it quickly. Like knowing <laughs> how to use it academically is kind of not knowing how to use it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yes, we shall shill. Yeah. So if you are ready for your uh, physics test, uh, you can leave us a rating and review on the internets. Uh, if you really want to help out, I think the best way is to actually make a recommendation. If you're into this game or some other game, re recommend that specific episode to someone because that that's, I think, the best funnel in. Um, if you want to reach out to us or recommend a game for us to play, because we try and focus entirely on uh, audience requests, there's a feedback form on the website. Social media is dead forever. Uh, feedback form on the website. Super easy Wood. to fill out. Uh, yes, good for everyone. Um, <laughs> sanity is uh, doing a lot better. Uh, but yeah, feedback form, website, links in the show notes. Um, also where you can do like podcast reviews and all that crap. Uh, if you really want to go above and beyond, though, you can actually give us money. Uh, and I think I told you this, but I just wanted to shout it out because this brings me a lot of joy. Uh, I think we now have patrons in five global currencies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah you mentioned uh, that. That's so yeah. cool because we, we just got a. Uh, I think we were at four and I think we just moved up to the fifth one in the last like week or two. Um but it's just it's so cool, especially because I go and look and it's like, here's what they're actually paying you. But then because you are in America, here is what it will be in dollars. Um, and I'm just like, ooh, look at, look at all these weird currencies that translate in ways <laughs> I don't fully understand. And I hope Patreon's not screwed us. Look at look at look at all of these colorful monies. Some of them are green. Some of them are pink. Some of them are blue. But they're all monies. And they're all man. America has the crappiest money. Our money is so lazy. Canada and and the United Kingdom have way cooler money, and I don't like Asia. It probably has like ten times cooler money. Oh yeah, no, I mean like if 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 you like flashcards for dead presidents, like it's kind of cool, but you know, 
outside that, of that. That's about, that's about it. Though. Yep. <laughs> Uh, If you support us at any level, you get the after show, which is more show, more physics lessons or made up physics lessons. Sometimes Uh, if you go at a high enough level, though, then we will shout you out. So first, we have to thank our 8-bit classics, Kevin, an amiable Axel, John, a bodacious BD Joe, Jason, a gregarious Gina, Yarno, gorgeous Gus, and Jacob, driver of the relaxy taxi. And our 16-bit hero, Michael. Driver of the Relaxy Cab. <laughs> Which one of those do you like better? Relaxy Taxi, Relaxy Cab? I like Relaxy Cab. I, like I think I do, too. Cab, you yeah, know? <laughs> I think I do, too. I get why people would go for the fun, like, double sound, right? Yeah. Relaxy taxi, taxi. But, yeah, Relaxy Cab is, I think, the better pun. It is, especially because, like, the way it's just, like, you know, you know, I, I came up with the name. You came up with Relaxy Cab. That's not better. It's not Relaxy Cab. It's Relaxy Cab, like Taxi Cab. Oh, that is better. <laughs> <laughs> is that so? I think. Is that I think friends. That, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that, uh, it's, world. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It is uh, uh, Phoebe and Rachel discussing their new business venture of putting people in a moving vehicle and trying to give them relaxing massages as they go uh, from yes. point A to point B. You know, the, the, the winningest of propositions. Yeah, that's not crazier than this game. Whoa, Whoa I just said we just right into did. audio visuals. Uh, Whoa. Nice. So uh, audio visuals, man, if, if you if you. Uh, took you know a, a a grand colloidal mixture of all different decades, right? You could and then distilled out the '90s. It would distill into this game. I I think it would. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think like you're you just, right. You just have like this grand scientific apparatus, and it's just dripping into this one thing, and you're like, and the scientist picks it up, swirls it, and goes, "I believe this is crazy taxi." <laughs> <laughs> whoa <laughs> whoa i think this is crazy taxi i promise we'll only do that 10 20 more times tops yep. um <laughs> each uh <laughs> I, th- I think it's interesting the way aesthetics music artwork clothing whatever uh they kind of bleed because if you are a person of a certain age I could very easily imagine someone saying, oh, this is so early 2000s. And it's like, yeah, it is, because the early 2000s was really just the late 90s, just like the early 90s was really just the late 80s. Right. And you you have that kind of like rolling thing. But from for video games specifically for the soundtrack and for the kind of hardware they were able to make this with, when you turn this on and you immediately get uh, like offspring and it's these like super polygon people with like weird polygon bodies and weird polygon hoof hands and stuff like that's how is that not 90s like and it's it's not bad i think the soundtrack is great i think the graphics are super nostalgic but it's super 90s and also too like is it just me this may just be me but i feel like that 75 percent of the 90s took place in la am i am i often and then the other 25 percent took place in manhattan you know um yeah well Pop culture has a really terrible thing about which cities exist and are worth making art about. But because the 90s was a cool decade, I think a lot of cool things were happening in cool cities like L.A., right? Like that's that's where surfers were and that's where valley girls were in Hollywood. Well, that's the thing. Is that specifically, it's that it's Hollywood. It's on the coast, right? You know, because that's the thing is that, you know, you think of the 90s, you think of like, yeah, man, like surfers and, you know, all that, all of that kind of culture right and everybody's always wearing you know like the cargo shorts you know and like the hawaiian shirts you know that are unbuttoned you know uh it, all, all of that stuff right and i don't Carrying know why a skateboard they never ride right exactly you know um or going to what are those outdoor gyms i feel like there's like a oh like a muscle it. beach yeah yeah, yeah. muscle I've, beach I, I've actually been to Muscle Beach and people really use it. Like there are actually giant dudes like Arnold Schwarzenegger size there pumping iron. It's kind of nice. weird. I saw a video one time of a a, a power lifter who got oh we watched it together. Who got makeup to look like a like a eighty year old man and just like yeah. hobbles on and then just deadlifts <laughs> like four hundred pounds. Everybody's like, what is happening? Um. Anyways, I say all that to say that yeah, it just I, I don't know why I feel that in the nineties, uh. 
both the video games and uh, the the video games are finally getting good enough to start to like reflect real life. So I just feel that a lot of video games designers just looked out their window and said, well, we're going to do that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah th- this. More of this, please. It, You know what it is. It's like a, it, you got to write what you know. It's that kind of thing. Um, I just realized uh, we, and this is my fault, uh, we completely skipped, like, what is your nostalgic experience oh, for this game? Do that. And, and I'm actually okay bringing it up here not because i don't have any choice and i'm not going to retcon it back into an earlier part of the show but because well it's that but because also um this is our first dreamcast game and for me the dreamcast is not a ps2 right like that is <laughs> it, its whole place in my mind is not the ps2 right like crazy people got a dreamcast because you know, you you and I have a long running thing that I think most PlayStation and N64 people have about like, oh, but I went to PlayStation because Final Fantasy. Oh, I went to N64 because Super Mario and Legend of Zelda. But those are both opinions that I, as a sane adult, can respect. But the only people I knew who had a Dreamcast, it's because they just could. Like they just <laughs> had they had enough money to have all of the things they wanted to have, and then also like put this crazy gamble on the Dreamcast. So to me, this was a thing I played at friends houses. Cause I, I don't think I actually ever played this in the arcade. Um, but I, I did play the dreamcast one specifically. And that's the one that was requested by our community. And I was kind of blown away by how like good the textures look, because as we have both remarked multiple times, the PS one kind of grainy, like it's a little, a little grainy, but, but this looks like really smooth, like almost shockingly so <laughs> no actually the game the game looks pretty good uh and just my my nostalgia experience for this game is none but i will give you my nostalgia experience for the dreamcast which is um you know because i i had a, a, a an n64 right and a sega and i remember thinking like oh man but the dreamcast because that had sonic awesomeness or whatever on it right you know and and sonic was cool and it was 3d and everything's better in 3d right <laughs> Um, so I remember, <laughs> I remember you're just, you're making me realize that eventually someone is going to request Sonic adventure and I am nervous for that day. <laughs> it's Lisa when she gets the braces and smiles like oh, there is no God. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but uh, my nostalgia experience is not for this game, but for the Dreamcast, which was uh, my exclusive uh, time I spent playing that because none of my friends owned it was playing it in uh target yeah yeah and those kiosks yeah that was that was my jam man you know get parents going to target and i would just go and play the dreamcast and dream of a day when i would own a dreamcast and then i think in my mind is i was like okay i will eventually buy this but it's really brand new and i still got my n64 and all this stuff and it just evaporated you know just <laughs> ceased to be and then i i mentally moved on to the next thing it wasn't until years later and somebody mentioned the dreamcast and i was like oh yeah whatever happened to that man you know so <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it went the way of the sega saturn and the atari jaguar <laughs> <laughs> yeah where you're like oh oh right uh yeah, so so no, the game actually does look very, very good, um, especially given the speeds that you're moving at. I thought that they did a good job linking the audio and the visual to set a tone, which is to say that it is, you know, you, you're just slamming into stuff left and right all the time, right? But you still get the visual of the person in the backseat, like standing up to yell at you about being a maniac. And I feel that that aesthetically drove the kind of the the point home of, yeah, I'm a madman. People are not happy with my behavior. And also to the, uh, um, not only are they standing up, but you can hear them saying, you know, Hey buddy, why don't you watch the road? And then I was, when I was playing as Axel, I just all the time, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, I got it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's, um, a lot of chit chat happening. There is not a lot of chit chat variety, which is, frustrating because like within the universe i think it actually creates a fantastic effect where if you because reckless driving is actually not the thing you're being punished for it's slow driving right things that are slow are like 
crashing into other cars or crashing into buildings and stuff. But if you like catch air off, cause it, this has uh, like a San Francisco feel in some spots, like these really steep, weird Hills in the middle of the city. And if you go like rocketing over one, or if you, you know, ramp up uh, like the side of a building and take a shortcut or something, as long as you continue to move at a high rate of speed, they continue to cheer you on. And if you're driving normal ish, like if you're just kind of going, um, that's when it gets the most repetitive because you, as you are learning the game, you are most likely to be driving normal ish, right? Trying to figure things out. And like one, one of the guys, he's like kind of a, a bigger, um, like a bigger dude. And he has kind of like the burr, 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 burr sort of voice. And he just goes like, turn left here. Okay. Turn left here. Okay. Turn left here. And, and you respond in, I think literally one of one or two ways, which is like, okay, okay. Okay. So you just, it, it incentivizes like drive more recklessly. So you get some variety <laughs> in the, the voice lines, but I, I like, I like their inclusion. And I think they are, they give you useful feedback. There's just not nearly enough variety. Yeah, I, I, it definitely could have used, you know, a, a ton more. I'm sure that, you know, they were, uh, you know, running out of money. But uh, um, I, I, I say all that, though, to say that, uh, yeah, no, I, I think that just imagine, because the game's crazy taxi, right? And I think that a, a lot of the visuals and audio are in service of that, because just imagine how weird it would sound if that wasn't in there. You know, people just get, <laughs> right. You know, like it, yeah. It would be weird. yeah, if they were dead silent, yeah, like they just be, got into your car. Worst. Yeah, they just got into your car, and then you're driving and all over the place, and they're just calmly eating saltines in the back. You know, <laughs> like that. <laughs> it would, it would be, it would create a ludo narrative dis- dissonance, right? Because it's like I am driving like a maniac, and somehow everyone in the universe is okay with it. So when you run into people, even though it does not immediately pink mist them against the front of your car right they do they are upset with you they're like whoa hey whoa, what are you doing and you're like ah oh, man this is crazy you know but like uh <laughs> yeah yeah so um one of the other things that i uh, i did like is that there was never any any hesitation in my mind of where my next fare was you know like in the sense of, you know, it's, it's got a big giant icon swirling above their head and there's always and color coded and color coded based off of um, based off of distance, distance. And um, there's a million of them, you know, so like it's not once you drop the person off, you, you, you just turn for your next quarry and then just go. You know, um, it wasn't at no point did I get frustrated to where I'm like, I'm losing time. Where's my next passenger? The The challenge in the game of is once you get the one, once you've identified the passenger, getting to them can sometimes be a little bit of a challenge. Um, yeah. But that's well, and they the do at, at like maybe restaurants, or, well, Pizza Hut or um, some some like large destinations. Sometimes you will drop someone off and then someone immediately gets in right because you lose control during that like get in get out animation you can't like screw that up and drive off grand theft auto style um so that's it, it's not only is the visual super clear but they have like a special camera swoop when someone is getting into the car so like the camera like pans over to them so you like see them like run over and hop over because every taxi is a convertible right so they jump over the back door and to, like get into the back seat and it's it's nice to know if you're in the rear camera view, I'm driving. And if not, like someone is something must be happening. Cause that's the only other time you're in a different camera view. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, and that was the other thing is that it will, uh, yes, yeah, that the camera is, is directly behind you, but I kind of touch more on that in the, uh, gameplay because that matters. Um, <laughs> One of the other things I really appreciate for the visuals of this game is that the arrow one, there's an arrow above you that points to where you need to go. Right. I was literally just at work the other day trying to explain to somebody how to create a standard work document. I was like, you need to be very, very careful with your visuals, you know, like the visual aids that you pick in and and all this sort of stuff. And I said, do you play any video games? And they were like, no, I mean, I play Mario Kart. And I said, sure. I pulled up Mario Kart and I said, look at your HUD. Now look at where they placed everything, right? And I said, most specifically, um, where where are your eyes 90% of the time? And they pointed to the driver. And I was like, that's right. And now what's the closest thing on your HUD to the driver? And they were like, the items. I'm like, because that's the thing you need to know, right? So that that area, if you're in a driving game, the area directly above dead center, that's the best, that's prime real estate. And what did they put there? The arrow that says where to go, 
right? So you're never like looking at a map and saying, you know, turn left at LA Boulevard. You know, it's 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 never that. You're just going. So not only is that a great place to put that visual, um, but that is a it tells you the route. It's not a compass, which is really nice, you know? So it doesn't say as the crow flies, go here. Is it, t- it says like, okay, turn here, you know? And I know this because there's one place where there's like a a, a a hairpin turn and it will guide you around that turn as opposed to just being like, no, now go this way. You know, as you'll drive and they'll say like, yeah, turn around. Yeah, I, I will not go too deep into this because this is more gameplay, but sometimes it fails over to being a compass. And when it does that, you feel lost, right? Because you're like, ah, I I had a GPS, right? I had Google <laughs> Maps giving me turn by turn, and now you're just telling me which way north is, and that's way less helpful. Um, but you're you're right when it is operating, which to be fair, it operates correctly the vast majority of the time. Um, and when it is operating correctly, it would be virtually impossible not to see it because not only is it a giant green arrow, but it kind of like swoops and turns and like elongates and collapses. So it's it is a really clear indicator, which to me says getting like finding your way there is not what is going to be challenging about this, right? It's getting there as quickly as possible because there are lots of secret shortcuts and some and stuff. So as you became better, you would start to maybe kind of ignore the arrow sometimes. Um, but that's like that's for an advanced player for an entry level player. The HUD gives you everything you need to get started. And the number one thing you need beside or, you know, besides like where am I going literally driving to is where do I need to get to? And the arrow handles all that. So this is, I'm just going to throw this out there and we can kind of touch on it or not later, but is this, is this a good Superman game? Oh no. <laughs> Cause you have I mean, like, it, it apparently runs on a similar engine <laughs> <laughs> because you, you don't have health or hit points. The The goal of the game isn't to find where you're going. You know, you have all of the information and all of the abilities to do it is to get there as quickly as possible while ostensibly running into as few things as possible. In this case, not because you're a good person, but because it slows you down, you know? Yeah. Well, it's, but, it slows you down from saving the person you're trying to save. Save. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like this is <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> is this a better Superman game than Superman 64? I mean, definitely because, you know, yeah, like <laughs> a dog turd is, but you know, I mean, I'm just saying, that, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah nope ship it that idea requires no further refinement <laughs> love it love everything about it okay so so next time somebody says oh man it'd be great if they made a good superman game we could say they did actually have you ever played crazy taxi well i think specifically if they're like you know oh man superman 64 and it's like oh but did you play version two on the dreamcast <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's got a bit, a bit of a different different paint on it but you know it, it works yeah. so do it, you have anything gets, else for visuals uh i do want to uh give a specific thumbs up to what I assume was a very intentional decision on Sega's part, which is uh, no matter how much nonsense is going on. And there's a lot of nonsense, right? Cause you can turn the amount of traffic up and down. You can turn the amount of time you have up and down, which makes you make increasingly reckless decisions, but there's a lot of other cars. There's a lot of buildings. There's crap flying around at a million miles an hour. And yet I didn't experience a single slowdown. I didn't experience a single like weird frame skip or jump or screen tearing or anything. Like I have played modern AAA games that were not this buttery smooth. And for a game that the entire point is drive a crazy taxi, right? Like that's, I think a a thing that's easy to overlook and like not even it's, it's electricity, it's plumbing, it's sewers, right? Like you just, you're like, well, of course it plays really smooth. It's like, no, dude, you don't understand. Not once in all the time did it have a single slowdown or frame skip. That's hard with 3D graphics early in in 3D's life and when there's so much crap popping in and out of reality because if you are driving really fast and a bunch of cars are going the other way down the street, how long do they keep those cars in memory in case you do a crazy drift and turn around and now they're in front of you again. Now they need to be rendered to the screen again. Right? So like there's some fairly sophisticated programming and trickery going to make the world feel like you can move through it at Superman speeds without things popping in and out of existence constantly. So I just like, 
I, I don't know how big of an impact that has on the actual gameplay experience, but once I noticed it, I was like, yeah, God damn it. Like locked at 60 <laughs> frames. Like this is yes, because anything less now I would feel pissy about. Yeah. I wonder what types of magic they're kind of doing behind the scenes or under the hood to, to make that possible. Cause it wasn't, I mean, I know the dreamcast was powerful for the time, but it, you know, wasn't earth shattering. So, so it's, it's probably a culmination of a bunch of smart, small choices, like little optimizations. Um, because nothing is destructible, like every object is just probably a single rendered object that just moves and like glides along. Like it doesn't need the wheels probably don't spin. Like if you looked carefully, their wheels probably are not rotating, right? So it's not, oh, we have to animate the wheels and we have to animate the thing. It's like, nope, this is just a cardboard cutout of a car that is drifting along the highway. Um, yeah, because you're the, going by it at a million miles an hour. So you're probably not scrutinizing it. Exactly right. The the you you can't see the drivers through the windows, right? Everything has that like cardboard window look. Um, but it, but it's fine. Like it doesn't need to. You don't need. It's not like Grand Theft Auto where you have to be able to get in and out of the cars and see the people through the windows. Does that car have one person in it or four people in it? Like, are they about to jump out with the Uzis? Like, you don't need any of that data. So you can find a million little optimizations, which then create this again just ridiculously butter smooth gameplay. Where I was like, huh, huh. You would not expect this like kind of silly arcade game for them to have been like, nah, dude, it's got to be locked at 60 frames per second. No screen tearing, no crap popping in and out. And it's like, oh, a lot of AAA games don't get that much love. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, but Crazy Taxi will. <laughs> and uh, the the kind of the last thing that I'll say in uh, visuals that leads me into a note in mechanics uh, that to piggyback off of that is that the only place where I saw the visuals get a little crazy, but it, it I don't know, it, it worked for me was if I was going full speed and I ran into a wall and I like needed to right myself, you know, um, clearly there, there was something going on. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second, but like the, the, the taxi would just jump all over the place because it was trying <laughs> yeah. to like get back onto the street. C- which, collision detection at high speeds sometimes creates crazy results. Yeah. Which to me was like in videos sometimes i feel like there's a particular movie that popularized this but where it shows like the person screaming but it overlaps you know them yeah, moving their yes. head around 50 times that's what it felt i felt like my taxi was screaming where it's like i don't know what to do you know well, so that's why you need the bright colors and the friendly music because <laughs> if you had like drab gray and and horror music then that would look like a woman screaming in a horror movie <laughs> But I say that to say that there is some kind of a writing mechanic, and you you may know more about this than I do, but I never got a hundred and it, when when I was driving a person. Now, when I was stopped, sometimes I would get stopped dead against the wall, and I'd put it into reverse, back up a little bit, and then write myself. But when I was going a million miles an hour, I could hit a wall at ninety degrees, and somehow the game would kind of nudge me back off of that wall you know so i i guess the amount of momentum that i was carrying <laughs> like when the unstoppable force hit the immovable object and i did stop <laughs> i somehow still magically had momentum and i think that that's what's happening is that your momentum does when you when your speed drops to zero your momentum doesn't immediately drop to zero you know it's what it feels like anyways yeah what what i would guess is probably happening is if you somehow because i mean it's a 3d world right so the odds that you ever hit something at a perfect right angle are not amazing because there's a lot of angles that are not a perfect right angle and there's only one that is so except for me I except for perfect perfect right <laughs> angles <laughs> with my slide rule um <laughs> so if you if you do crash into something at a perfect right angle or very nearly a perfect right angle i would not be surprised if there's code that's like okay but when you bounce off you don't bounce straight back you bounce at an angle that is impossible it's not it's not you know an isaac newton three laws of physics kind of thing like you you bounce back at an angle that if you just continue to floor the gas you will work yourself off of the wall because that's that is if you're gonna fudge physics you need to fudge physics in a way that makes sense for what players are likely to do in your game and what players are likely to do in an arcade game called crazy taxi is drive at full speed with no regard for anything so that means when you collide with something 
you need to get back to moving in the direction you are trying to go as quickly as possible. This is also, uh, I think visible when you strike another vehicle because when it's funny, right? Like this whole world is ruled over by Roger rabbit. When it's funny, every other car weighs nothing. And your car has infinite mass because you will (laughs) crash into them and they will just go flying. Like they're made out of cardboard. Right? So, but if you're going at a low speed that it doesn't work like that. So they're, their physics change to suit the situation. And it's, it's funnier if they go flying when you're doing 150 miles an hour, but if you're going 10 miles an hour, you just kind of nudge them and and they're like, Oh, Hey, right. So there's the physics sort of change to suit the <laughs> ideal for that situation. You know what also wouldn't. Um, yeah. Cause I think that, that the way that, so my guess is two things. One is that, the way that they're carrying momentum in the game, again, defies all physics. And they can do whatever they want, right? But that basically your momentum is not conserved, right? Which is to say that, you know, when you hit another car, the amount of momentum that you transfer to them does not deplete your momentum by a similar amount, right? No, you create energy from nothing. Correct, right. <laughs> <laughs> I saw an, a great XKCD uh, comic where, because, um, you know, there was the, the nuclear fusion thing where they generated more energy than they put into it. It just showed the person, like, with a presentation for a hydroelectric dam. And they said, we have finally perfected our hydroelectric dam with a Q greater than one, which is to say that we created more water than we put into it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's it. I don't remember seeing that one. That's a good one. Right? I, I saw that and I was like, ha! And then I turned to Megan and I said, hey, honey. And uh, no, it, don't. No, don't. No, 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 no. It's, it's fine. It's, I, I saw funny. Um, <laughs> I say all that to say. So I think that that's part of it. And also, it, I think that I saw this, but I don't know if my brain's, you know, Roger Rabbiting itself, where it's like, no, you definitely saw this. It's like, because I wanted to. Is if the car is rectangle shaped, but the car's hitbox is boat shaped, you know, to where it's like the hitbox is like rounded on the sides. So it'll kind of clip through the the headlights, but you're not really going to notice that. But that would give you a nice smooth kind of edging off of the wall, you know. See, that would be another thing that if they were very clever, that they might do at higher speeds. So like mm. if you imagine a box as the box accelerates, it becomes boat shaped, right? Right. So like the the ends like pinch in because that would be mathematically that would be a way to make the system give the player the results they want, right? Which is at slow speeds when you can obviously see that your giant Cadillac convertible has clipped the edge of a building, you expect to hit the building right if if you right. saw the car you know slide through the building that would look weird if you're going a thousand miles an hour what you want is that like whoa we almost hit that building feeling even when the game is like no nah, buddy you did hit that building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a trace i almost lost it you did lose it you know it's the, yes we almost and- hit that building <laughs> you did hit that bu- like kratos is in the back seat you know it's like whoa dude we almost hit that building and you just see kratos brooding you did hit that building <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, but I think um, the the salient takeaway from what you're saying and what I'm speculating on is whether or not that's actually happening. It's how you felt, right? You felt like at high speeds, you were like, whoa, like I just like I must have teleported right through that building. And it's like, maybe you did. Maybe it just felt like you did. But the end result is still you felt like something cool happened. Right. I, I think that, that this game is definitionally just <laughs> whenever they, they said, well, what do the rules say? And everybody just goes, rule of cool, man. Rule, rule, rule of cool. cool. <laughs> Overrides everything, which is, you know, which is great because the, the game you want to feel like in the 90s movie where they go under the overpass and it rips the top off the car and then both characters look <laughs> at each other and go, whoa. That was close. You know, that's the whole feeling of the game. So anytime when you're like, oh, no, I actually died. It's like, well, well, that's that's not fun. Yeah. Well, and and that's as far as I can tell, your car cannot be turned upside down. Right. You can't run out of fuel. Right. You can't because this game and I I didn't say this in my uh, very clever and funny summary, but the game is a score chaser. That's it. Right. There's there's. There's the the crazy box mode, which is really just there to teach you some of the mechanics. But the the arcade game and what they ported to the Dreamcast is 
make as many dollars as you can. So you either have a fixed time limit where you're trying to make as much money as you can in that time limit, or you extend the time, I guess maybe indefinitely by continuing to get people to their destination in less time than the reward. So if you're rewarded with 20 seconds, but you got them there in 19, then you could presumably just kind of go on forever. Um, so that that's like, Everything is centered around helping you be successful at that goal, as opposed to standing in the way of you being successful at that goal. Like the world really wants you to win. There's you, you said it before, right? There's, there's people everywhere. There's a million be- finding a fair is never an obstacle because that's not crazy, right? Like that's saying like, Oh, I drove around the block for hours and nobody called for a cab is not crazy. Um, the the people like we mentioned it in the audio video or the audio visuals is like they have their little dialogue lines but like if you catch air they like cheer you on right if you crash into things they're like whoa don't do that which is all little bits of feedback for like things that are good right and in up to and including if you do certain kinds of tricks they just tip you like you just <laughs> make more money so you are directly it, because it's a score chaser game you are directly incentivized to drive crazier because they will pay you for the privilege which is a great exemplar of a game not optimizing the fun out of it right which is to say that they were very careful with the best way to play the game is the most fun way to play the game you know so uh again you, you know like you said like you get bonus money for passing cars or near misses i think i mean which those two things are pretty synonymous you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah i mean so so you're 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 you know ward i guess you're you're your <laughs> payer um uh is uh is you know saying like yeah man great you pass five things and you'll slam into something and they're like oh, oh don't do that not because you created terrible property damage but because you slowed down a little bit and they want to get to their place on time so yeah no and then and then on top of that um the places to drop people off are like you know you could drive a truck through it right they're they're big <laughs> areas which is good because again it's not like at no point did it was i you know did I pass the area where I was supposed to drop somebody off and then, uh, you know, put it into reverse and then back it up and, oh, nope, nope, went too far and put it back into drive, you know? That that wouldn't be crazy. There were times when I overshot it, but I was like, no, I, I, had, I had a lot of room to do that. Actually, I saw a, a meme recently where somebody said like, hey, um, you know, always shoot for the moon because if you miss, the moon's 3,000 kilometers wide and you could not have <laughs> this up more. You know? <laughs> That actually, it's funny because I also heard a, uh, a paraprostokian on that, um, that like shoot for the moon thing, uh, recently for the first time, which was, um, shoot for the moon and keep shooting. The moon must be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So anyways, I say that to say that, you know, when I did miss this is I was like, no, that was on me, you know, like <laughs> yeah, the game gave me the tools to be successful. <laughs> I just, I saw the green and I was like, I got to get there faster. And I hit the brakes while I was in the air flying towards the green. So uh, yeah, yeah, that one, that one's on me, Morty. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if I ever caught air in a real car in real life, I would be too busy shitting myself to do anything else. But I have noticed that it is virtually impossible to resist the urge to press the brakes in a driving game when you hit the air. And it's like, I, I, it's my version of you probably had friends or maybe relatives who like leaned when they played Mario Kart, you know, they're like, uh, right. Like somebody leans when they're bowling or whatever, like pressing the brakes when the car is in the air is my version of leaning. It's like, (laughs) this can't possibly be helping, but I'm not ever going to stop doing it. (laughs) Uh, now, when we were kids, we actually uh, drove over like they had these big giant um, uh, speed bumps, you know, like in this long <laughs> in this long road that eventually led to a very sharp turn, which is probably why the speed bumps were there. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a story that at 20, you would have told very differently than you're going to now tell in your life. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> when, when I was 17 and, you know taking my 85 or 89 Ford Bronco that was worth $200 <laughs> at breakneck speeds over these, over these bumps with the back seat down and my friends wrestling in the back without seat belts. That was the coolest thing ever. And now I'm like, I don't know what my purpose is, but I have to have one because <laughs> I should not have survived that. I say all of that to say that 
Yeah, it's 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 disarming when when your car starts to come up off the ground. But uh, yeah, no. So so, anyways, I say that to say that that again, they they maximize the fun into their game. You know, they said like, hey. How can we make this as easy on the player as possible while still providing some type of challenge? So, you know, I mean, even with like your the, the fairs that you go pick up, like they have the circle. If any, if, if even a molecule of your tail light is in that circle, they, they, they come running for you. Right. So, you know, again, the only times when I was like, ah, no, I missed that person. It's like, well, I didn't miss the person. I hit them. And then that knocked them out of <laughs> Their circle range, you know. So again, very, very well done. What would you call that? Player generous instead of player hostile. Player friendly. Oh, yeah. Right? But like, yeah, yeah. Well, if it's like player hostile, player neutral, player friendly, player generous, player making it rain, you know, like they just. <laughs> I like that our scale has more positivity than negativity. That's yeah, nice. man. You know, yeah. you gotta gotta keep it gotta keep it positive. <laughs> so let me ask you about the controls because. This was originally an arcade game and we was they, an arcade game. They have like a wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Like a sit, sit down and drive arcade game. This, this feels like that type of arcade game. That's exciting. Right. Because yes, like obviously because the, the gear shifter, big steering wheel, the brake pedal, you probably don't often interact with, but, uh, I personally struggled with the controls for the first good, like hour or two I put into this game because I was, thinking about it like a driving game and i don't personally i don't think that's actually the right way to think about it so tell me like did you struggle at all did you just feel like oh no it's obvious how you do this because it's not a driving game superman game and you're flying yeah (laughs) i mean kind of (laughs) yes um no i didn't i didn't really struggle too much with it uh um because i'm you know good at video games uh, but <laughs> uh, no, the thing that I, I really did struggle with that honestly took me a minute was that drive and reverse are not the same button, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that right, one took me a minute. Kind of like on a, if you had the physical shifter, they would be in two different places. Yes. But yeah, I was just, uh, there, cause I'd be in drive and I'd be like, okay, now reverse reverse. Okay. Maybe that's not the reverse. Button. Oh, okay. X puts it into reverse. Got it. All right. That makes sense. Okay, now drive. Drive. And I'd be like, no, maybe I was wrong. Was oh, it was circle. Okay. I thought it was circle the first time. Whatever. And it wasn't until I'm like, ah, no, it it's it's the one for the other. But that outside of that, you know, I mean, pretty much I just treat it as, you know, um drive as fast as humanly possible. And it did take me a little bit of time to like remember where the break was. I would forget where that was from time <laughs> to time. Uh, which is helpful to have the break. Um, but yeah, no, I I, I felt it was okay. somewhat so- intuitive. Did you mess with the crazy box mode at all? No, no, I mostly played in the uh, arcade and uh, what, what's the other version? It was arcade and, o- and original, which is always original, but that didn't feel right because it was an arcade cabinet. Right. I actually had a discussion about this with someone in chat when I was playing on stream because <laughs> it's just like, how do they, how do companies keep messing this up when they do their arcade ports? Like, is this really that complicated? Um. So anyway, uh, the, the reason I ask about it is because there is and and this is what i think is actually the the biggest sign that this game had real like game designers behind it is to me this game is like chess which is pretty easy to learn the basic rules but then there is this absolute massive amount of depth so if you go into the crazy box mode and i i don't think they did this in the arcade Dude, they were like, yes, like, I compared Crazy Taxi to chess. Yeah, they're like five grandmasters who are just like, nope, unsubscribe. I, I think chess <laughs> is just a, a great example of like the rules are not that complicated, but that's not the complicated part about yeah, chess. No, I, no I, 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 I like that because the next time I'm sitting down and somebody says, you know, I've never been very good at t- chess. I'm going to say like, well, have you ever played Crazy Taxi? Because those it's kind of things- like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thematically, it is a lot like that. Um, Sorry, continue. But, but okay, so the the arcade cabinet probably did not have the crazy box, right? Because the crazy box is a very here's a little sandbox of challenges where you can learn how these specific game mechanics work, right? Arcade games tend to not do stuff like that because they want your money and they're not no one would pay to do those little challenges. They would have to find some way to like gamify them. Whereas here they're very tutorial and they're optional, right? They'd need to they they want you to pay money to learn how to play the game on the fly. 
you know right <laughs> um and and the thing about arcade games that i've i've become increasingly fascinated with the social aspect of games the more we've done nostalgia goggles because all of the stuff that's in the crazy box, your friend would tell you in the arcade, right? Or you would see somebody do something while you're waiting for your turn and you would go, Hey, how did you do that? Right. And like, I I've, I've actually really come to be fascinated by that whole like meta layer of video games. Um, and like what the internet did to like, Oh, there's a Mewtwo under the truck in the game boy Pokemon, right? Like that, that kind of stuff is just super interesting to me. You don't, you can't bank on that in a single player game. And so when they ported this, they probably added in that crazy box mode, which teaches you how to do the crazy dash and the crazy drift and the crazy stop and all these other like little things. And it gives you all these dumb challenges to practice them in all of those skills, throw them straight in the garbage. You don't need to know any of them to play the game. Yes, I, I was aware that those existed, but I never even really tried to master them. You know, I was just like, I'm having fun playing it without them. Yes. And that's the thing is you don't need them to have fun. Right. And and this is where the difference between a game like this and the analogy to chess completely falls apart, because if you are playing this game and you suck at it, you could still have an amazing time. If you are playing chess against a competent player and you suck, you probably won't have an amazing time. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe if you're into that sort of thing, but um I was struggling with the controls when I was trying to execute the crazy combos because the crazy combos, at least in my mind, do not make sense from a driving perspective. Cause like to do the crazy dash, you have to hit the accelerator, let off the accelerator, hit drive and then hit the accelerator. So it's kind of like a pop up sort of, you know, like, cause it's a shoulder button and a face button. You have to like alternate between them and uh, you can do it if you are at a dead stop or if you are going at your maximum speed, but not like the middle speeds, because the idea is somebody jumps in the back of your cab and then you crazy dash to immediately get up to like nearly your highest speed. Right. Um, and then when you're at your highest speed on a straightaway, you can crazy dash again to limit break and go like even faster than your maximum speed. And if you are score chasing, those kinds of techniques are required to get the highest possible scores right faster turns faster stops faster fast so yeah more you, crazy yeah you have to master those skills the thing that i was struggling with though is i was having fun just faffing around and then i was like oh i'm gonna try and learn some of these skills because that's like how you get into deeper parts of the gameplay and i near broke my damn hand <laughs> because the in-game instructions suck ass they're so <laughs> bad and then someone in our discord was like, oh, hey, here's like a clearer instruction of how to actually press the buttons. And once I stopped thinking like, oh, I'm shifting gears and I'm pressing the accelerator and I'm pressing the bake or I'm steering the car. I, I just I was like, this is a Hadouken. Like I'm just I'm doing things to the controller that will then make the car go faster. Then I got it and I was fine. Nice. But I, I just I can't imagine that that's a problem in the arcade, right? Because you have physical driving controls. You have to think of them as physical driving controls. Right. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. And like, like I said, like I just, I enjoy just kind of faffing around, you know? Um, again, I think that that would ultimately uh, limit my time on it. Like I would peter out faster than you because you, you, you have this skill based thing that you can now do for me. It's just once the novelty of, it's crazy wore off I, I would be kind of like all right you know that that, that that was fun um i say that to say that i do also feel that this game really benefits from like playing with somebody else in the room because i think that that the most fun about this thing is doing a horrifying or crazy or ridiculous thing and then not only you enjoying it but the person beside you enjoying it as well because at one point i i don't know how exactly i did it but I made a wrong turn in Albuquerque and I was just driving on roofs, you know? And <laughs> yes, because there's shortcuts. Yeah. And so I was just kind of like, I, I went from roof, I, I turned and, and as I was like kind of about to go into the air, I'm like, there's no way I can do this. And I was on a roof and I drove onto the awnings of another roof and just kept going and then landed. And I was like, that was awesome. Nobody, nobody cares. Like I'm the only person <laughs> playing this, you know? Um, but, but again, if we were playing together or you're playing with, you know, a group of friends, right. Uh, that would be fun. Or, or I could imagine like at a college party where, you know, it's the, uh, uh, 
apparently like the Mario drinking game rules, which is uh, no drunk driving, which is to say you are only allowed to drink while you're at a stop, you know? Right. Be like right, that, right. that like stuff like that where it just be like the you know oh man you know like like you gotta go you gotta go and then it's like dude i'm working on it you know like that that type of feedback loop i think is is really critical for this game the, the, to your point the social aspect well and and the social aspect i think provides a like the cheese around the medicine for people who don't care about score chasing because mechanically this is a pure arcade game, right? There is nothing to do but get a higher score. And this game actually had several sequels. I think there's Crazy Taxi 2 and 3, and then I think there's also like a Game Boy Advance port or something. So really? they they, nice. they wrung a lot of blood out of this turn up. But I, I don't know about the later games, but at least in the first one that we played, there's there's nothing else, right? There's no explorer mode. There's no... The, the crazy box is like very limited. I think there's like nine things and they're all just there to teach you these mechanics and if you went back to them it would be to try to do them faster or get a better score while you're doing them or whatever so it's 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 score chasing all the way down but it's really easy to imagine you know siblings or friends that live near each other or you know like college roommates or whatever playing this game and never score chasing because they just have a fun time watching each other drive around so they never get into all of the crazier mechanics or they get into them in like a more shallow way and they don't really care how much money they're making because what's amazing is you know you're standing in the kitchen and your roommate is playing and you could see the tv and they just go flying over a building when you expected them (laughs) to crash into a building but they just ramped so high and you're just like whoa that was crazy right and and it's like yeah but you only delivered one passenger who cares that's not how we're choosing to engage with this but if you don't score chase and you don't have a, a a player two essentially to enjoy the game with, then I think you're right. Like the novelty would would that veneer comes off way faster. Yeah. Um, one of the other things uh, that I believe my my gut is telling me is a thing, but I don't think that they really did a good enough job telegraphing is um, so you, there are different people and different taxis um, like you know you can pick as the player character but they don't tell you what the differences are other than cosmetic i assume there are mechanical differences but i think i think they're cosmetic hmm. I, if there are differences i also could not detect them hmm. i mean you you, you want to bet on it because we can't look it up now but we can look it up we can look it up after um the people in the after show will know who wins that's right uh I think I, I think that there there has to be mechanical differences. There just there's just there just has to there has okay, to be. So, man. so when you say mechanical differences, do you mean like top speed, braking yeah. power? Okay, yeah. because the I would agree that it is possible that the cosmetic difference may also change like the hitbox of the car. Sure, but, but no, I, I'm I don't like, I don't count that. No, 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 I'm saying you know, like you said, higher top speed. You know, turns faster. Oh, whatever. Okay. Uh, in the in the interest of uh, continually making terrible bets against you, um, I will bet that there are zero mechanical differences between. Even though I don't think I actually believe this, but I will bet <laughs> I, I I will be on the the side of zero mechanical differences between the four drivers. Okay, and I and I will bet that there is at least one mechanical difference. Y- yes, yeah, yeah which no, is the you, far far easier. Yeah. Like you. <laughs> gotta give you like five to one odds or something <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like i am betting that there is nothing i am betting that there is something <laughs> <laughs> even five to one feels kind of but but yes i i will go on the side of purely cosmetic okay um so yeah but anyways the, the moral of the story is whichever way it is um yeah there, there's there if there if if i am if quote unquote correct right um they don't tell you any of this, right? You know, they don't in any way say, you know, oh, hey, this and 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 if there are no mechanical differences, and that that feels like kind of a lost opportunity because I can't believe it'd be completely game breaking to make you know Mario Kart style stuff where it's just like, oh, this person you know has a, a lower top speed but can accelerate faster. This person has a higher top speed but it's harder to get to. So this person's better for you know old hats of the game this one's better for new people whatever you know i mean that feels like kind of a slam dunk and that they if that's true then they should have telegraphed it you know yeah and i think 
I, I think there's a weird like mixed incentive here because remember originally an arcade game, like you benefit in this kind of unquantifiable way from not mm. telegraphing that because now you've given two players something to talk about, right? When I play, I always play this driver. When you play, you always play that driver. And I've seen you do this thing that I just can't make work. And it turns out it's slightly easier with the driver you drive as, but you don't know that. And I don't know that. Right. So now like kind of, I think you and I were talking a different time about how there's so much Marvel crap right now that if you are (laughs) into Marvel stuff, it like saturates your entire entertainment, like mental capacity and you know, MMOs do that same kind of thing. But you can imagine an arcade game trying to suck the oxygen out of the arcade, right? You want people waiting. You want them playing your game, waiting their turn to play your game or talking about that time they played your game, right? Like you, you want to be the, the talk of the arcade. So you're probably right. Like there probably is some mechanical difference between them, but you know, I had to come down on the other side for reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because otherwise it's not fun. Yeah. But, um, I, but I do agree with you. It is, as far as I can tell in no way communicated in game, like there's short of taking your own measurements of saying like, Oh, did this person break better or accelerate better or have a higher top speed? Like there's no UI for it. There's no, there's no UI for it. And also too, is if there, if there are differences, they'd be somewhat, I, from what I could tell somewhat subtle and there's no, again, my gut check, like from, from what I saw when I was playing, there's no great visual affordance for it either, which is to say that not, not only say like, is there no, you know, bars that say what it is but for example if you are looking at an mmo right and they give you no information about it but you see one person who's seven foot tall 350 pounds clad in full plate mail with a sword and shield and the other one who's a lithe wizard with long flowy robes you know like it's and 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 you said like okay which one of these two is the spellcaster you know you'd say the second one and if this the second one was the tank then that's bad game design, you know? Now I have other questions. Well, I mean, this game, you know, we, we talked about the HUD. It You have your score, which is the taxi fare counter, right? Like it, it looks like a, a an old fashioned, like tick, ticking up counter. Um, You have the gear that you're in and you have how much time you have remaining. That, that's it. It's a driving game. No speedometer because the assumption is you're always going as fast as you possibly can be. Right. Yeah. So maximum error. Yeah, so if there is a difference in in top speeds, you know, cars usually have a way to communicate that specific piece of information to the driver that this game specifically leaves out. Yes, absolutely. But also, too, is that, is that you know, if, for example, one of the drivers had was driving kind of like a sporty taxi when the other one is driving, you know, an old you know, Chevy taxi, like, you know, a, a 1970s big muscle car taxi. What? Yeah. And, and this is what is has made me concerned that you're probably right is the <laughs> there's there's a white guy, a black guy, a white girl and an older white guy. So like three young people and then one one old person and the three young people drive different cars, but they're all like from roughly the same era. The older guy drives like an old fashioned, like a 1940s kind of, you know, rounded um, like you, you'd know it if you saw it, I'd, like a Studebaker, maybe. Um, and I'm thinking like, I bet that one has the worst acceleration, but the higher top speed like Bowser and Mario Kart, right? Like it's it's like, ah, uh, yeah, it's an old clunker. But once she gets going, you better watch out. <laughs> and that's the thing is that like like all all four vehicles do have different looks to them. Um, but n- n- no. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The, the last one does kind of have that. It looks like it comes <laughs> out of fall, Fallout 3, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but but none of them, you know, one of them's not, you know, a a Hyundai Sonata, and the other one is, you know, like the the old American muscle car, right? They all look close enough to where I was like, any of these could theoretically be the the Bowser, you know, um, and especially like if the older man had a bit of a gut, but no, he looks he looks pretty svelte, you know, like he looks looks like he 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 keeps keeps in good shape, you know. Yeah. He he hits Muscle Beach sometimes. Yeah, sometimes like and he always passes prime, but um, you know <laughs> he, he does okay. Uh, the, the the last note that I have is um, so this this game controller had an analog stick, which is good because 
110% necessary. Fortunately, around this time, they were kind of finally like, hey, if you move in three dimensions, you need to be able to see all that. But if, um, but N64 it, style though, still just the one. Still just the one, right? Um, and, and as I was playing it and I realized that this has, you know, the one analog stick, I was like, oh my God, am I going to have to listen to Lions for the next hour and a half, not <laughs> shut the hell up about the dumbass camera and how he doesn't have enough control over it? <laughs> No, and you <laughs> so you, it, you raise a fair criticism of apparently the only thing I'm known to care about. <laughs> well, that 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 and plinths, but uh, that's that's a different yes. thing. <laughs> plinths and manners. Um, I you can't feel bad about the camera in this because the camera is always exactly where it needs to be, right? And I could imagine in a game that let you. Because I I think I just said this to you the other day, which is like I steer from the camera, right? Which is like in a game like Grand Theft Auto, I guarantee you I camera my way around turns. But in this, not only can you not do that, I don't know why the hell you'd ever bother. Like (laughs) you, you, you corner at what would surely be forces that would rip your bones through your flesh, right? Oh, like yeah. you, you can take corners at maximum speed. And as you said, basically lose zero momentum. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll separate out the, his highness from your denser fluids. Won't that also crush my bones? Oh, right. The bones. I always forget about <laughs> the bones. Yes. Yes. That. And also, uh, do you remember the movie Tron? Uh, you know, I never saw Tron or Tron 3D Legacy Ultra 3D Legacy. <laughs> okay, have have you ever seen a parody of Tron where they they always show the light cycle part yes. and how they, yeah, they I, make I'm culturally instanta- familiar with it? Yes, yes, they they make instantaneous right angle turns because yes. it's digital, it's game. right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and I mean, they literally are in the computer, so like the, the physics are not happening. It is a representation of them what they're doing. So uh, this is pretty close to that. Like you. And if if you know how to do the crazy drift, you can make even sharper turns. <laughs> so it's it's pretty pointless to say like, oh, the, the camera's behind the car and I need to turn the camera the same way I would turn my head to look where the car is going. Because by the time you think I would like to be facing that direction, you are. And so the camera is essentially always pointing exactly where you need to go. Now, I will say sometimes I thought the camera was... um more angled down than I would have liked. Like I would either want like more headroom. So like a smaller car taking up less space or for the camera to be a little lower so that I was looking more down the road. Sometimes I felt like there's a lot of road in my field of view, but that's, (laughs) that's honestly, it wasn't ever really a, it, I, I don't think it ever inhibited my ability to successfully deliver people to pizza hut. Like it wasn't my preference because I'm used to modern games where I have more control over the camera, but unlike Mario 64 and Banjo Kazooie, where I was constantly like railing against the camera here, I was just like, Oh, Hey, you can't control the camera. Okay. Right. And that that was my takeaway too, was I was, I was like, Oh, you can't control the camera, but where else would the camera be? You know, right. It's, it's, it's directly it's behind where you. It is. <laughs> yeah. It's directly behind you. Um, you know, yes, to your point, right, is if you had a little bit more control, there may be a couple of different things you do, but mostly because of the breakneck speeds you're going at, you need it. If you were to try to steer with the camera, that would slightly limit how far ahead you can see. And you need to be seeing all the way ahead because things are coming at you at a million miles an hour <laughs> because there is no universal frame of reference. So I am standing still and these people are flying <laughs> at me. Well, I think you're making me realize because I don't play a ton of driving games and the ones I do tend to be silly right so crazy taxi mario kart right not um forza right not gran turismo which are like hyper realistic but i actually think that even in those games and i know for sure like in mario kart you actually can't control the camera right and i mean mario kart 8 deluxe is on the switch and there is a whole second analog stick and you totally could control the camera if you wanted to but I don't think you can, and I don't think you can in modern driving games like hyper-realistic ones either. Well, and also, too, though, I think you're kind of proving the point, which is you don't think you can because you never tried, because why would you? You know, it's just occurring to you and to me (laughs) now where it's just like, I don't think you could do that. It's like, but you never tried, did you? It's like, to be fair, I did not, you know, so because the camera's where it needs to be, you know? What's, What's that parable about the door being locked? Like, if... 
if you think the door is locked and so you never try to go through the door, it doesn't matter if the door is locked or not. Sh- like it's, your store. It, like it's, yeah, it's it's locked in your mind. So if you never even try the door, then being locked or not doesn't matter. What matters is that you think it's locked. <laughs> Dude, we could definitely go down a philosophical rabbit hole about all that stuff because I, 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 <laughs> I literally have... And, and you know Teddy's seven, right? You know, so I mean, he he's a seven year old, but occasionally he'll say like, you know, well, you know, w- what is going on with thing A? And I was like, it doesn't matter because it in no way concerns you, and thus therefore, it can both be it can both be and not be. But all of those possibilities will never collapse into a single reality because you will never <laughs> observe it. But and he's like, but is it or is it not? I'm like, ah, but all of existence. It's like, dude, just don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it is it's, it's eventually what it comes down to but it's just like yeah you know it's just the is the door locked or is it unlocked and it's like well you're not supposed to go in there so it kind of doesn't matter does it but anyways um yeah so uh yeah that was my last big note which was uh the camera is where it needs to be and i thought <laughs> i thought you would be happy i was apparently and didn't even realize it um but i yeah i think i'm also ready to wrap up so i will uh kind of to my own surprise, say no nostalgic goggles required. Like this game's silly. It's fun. Uh, I think you need to know going into this, how much you want to get out of it. Because if you have easy access to this game or, you know, a, a port of it, cause this game was ported all over creation. So like we played the dreamcast one. Cause I was like, ah, we never played dreamcast game, but I mean, this game's all over the goddamn place. Uh, you know, if, if, it costs you $10 to get a hold of this and you're going to put an hour into it. I would say like, yeah, you will have a fun hour and there are way stupider ways you can spend $10. But if you don't like silly games, if you don't like score chasers, um, that's all there is, right? There's the silliness and there's the score chasing. And if you're not going to enjoy either of those things, there isn't a secret story mode, right? There's nothing really else to do. (laughs) So amazing. (laughs) Right. Yeah. There's like this, I mean, at that point, now you have Grand Theft Auto, like bad driving with an emotional story is Grand Theft Auto. Um, but but I don't think that that's a bad thing, right? This is an arcade game and an arcade port that is really clear about what it is and executes on it in this really fun, like dip, dippable, snackable way that not every arcade port we have played succeeds at, right? A lot of them, once you take away the quarters, they break and rampage like ways where they just fall honestly down. i think this one's second only to golden axe in that regard <laughs> <laughs> yikes um <laughs> yeah, yeah like per- personally i would say no nostalgia goggles required like i would even go so far as to give it a recommend like yeah seek it out it's fun to throw a little bit of time or a lot of time if you like score chasers absolutely no I, I, I agreed i would also give it a no no nostalgia goggles required because yeah it, it and to your point right is that i would say that either a if you're go if you like score chasing then by all means this this game does it does it well and spend hours trying to figure out all of the special combo moves in order to get that high score uh if you're not then it's still worth it's still fun it's still worth you know half an hour a couple hours you know um definitely would recommend that it, it you'll get way more out of it if you and a friend split that five, ten dollars you both go into it for five and uh and then just spend you know an hour kind of giggling and going like whoa and and and, and also to I don't know if this counts as like nostalgia, but you know, it, the minute that the game boots up, you're like, Oh yes, the nineties, you know? So I don't think you had to have lived in the nineties to enjoy it, but it, it hits you like a slap in the face, you know? But uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, if anybody asked me, I'd say this game's crazy good. The curtain falls, the music plays, the credits roll, then it all fades to black. And you're left by yourself The fanfare is gone There's no player two There by your side to share victories won But as you slowly progress Down the hall to your bed A few great events Leak back into your head From the time that you spent Traversing the land Battling evil Fighting the darkness Just sword in hand Your memories creep in With the edge of a smile 